I did a video earlier on not allowing your influences to cloud your judgment when it comes to gear choices. I should also state you shouldn't let popular trends cloud that judgment either. In the mid 90s, there was a hot trend for piccolo snare drums and every newbie that didn't know jack squat about tone had one. At this point in time, I was a huge 311 fan and was a huge fan of Chad Sexton's. Little did I know and would later learn after I became friends with Chad that he didn't use piccolo snare drums. He actually played at the edge of the snare drum. And what I mean by that is just a little bit of the shaft and a tip. <laughs> hey, yo! <laughs> a little bit of the... <laughs> I can't even laugh. I can't even say it without laughing. Basically, the, the shortest part of the stick would hit the head and rim. You could look at a snare drum and see that nothing had been touched except for these two little spots at the edge near the rim of the snare. And that's how he got that signature sound he has. And he was playing a normal like six and a half. But I digress. I had bought this cheap Tam Up steel piccolo snare drum and decided to crank it to high heaven and ruin everybody's hearing within a three mile radius. I had just joined this all instrumental trip hop band and I got us some free time at a studio. I remember being so excited to get into the studio, record these tracks that were hot fire, son, and show the world your boy crushed on the drums. Look out, modern drummer. Here comes Brian Christopher Mendes and his cheap, thin sounding piccolo. Everybody, I'm Brian Christopher Mendes, and welcome to Mendiesel 101, my web series that deals with gear, lessons, humor, and anything else that I have learned in the past 23 years plus, give or take, of my professional career. Before we get started, I would like to mention that my website is up where you can find merch such as this t-shirt and this hat, as well as other cool designs and different styles of t-shirts that are also available. And please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I have a certain love affair with 8x14 snare drums. And within that collection of 8x14 snare drums, I have an aluminum, 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 <laughs> aluminum, <laughs> aluminum, brass, maple, acrylic, steel, hand hammered steel, and mahogany. And this love affair started after my first recording session when I went back into the control room to listen to the tracks, started listening to them and heard this horrible paper thin sound coming from the snare drum. I quickly said to the sound engineer, why does my snare sound so paper thin? As if it was his fault. <laughs> because obviously it couldn't be my fault, right? Right. He turned to me and said, it sounds so thin because you have a thin snare drum. It's a piccolo. After that session, I quickly returned that snare drum, paid the difference, and got this 8x14 Premier Maple snare drum. It was a projector. And I immediately fell in love with what I was hearing. Shortly after, I started to gig professionally and needed a second snare drum and thought, well, I'll buy me like a normal six or six and a half inch snare drum. And I came across this Ayat Drumsmith steel, as a matter of fact, that sounded incredible. So being at this point that I was playing a lot of small venues and most of the music I was playing was singer songwriter or more rootsier style music, the thinner snare just wasn't working. I noticed this thinner snare was too bright and ear piercing and I would immediately pull it off and pull out the eight by 14 and put it on a stand. Now I've mentioned in the past that I'm a big guy and I use big sticks. Now I should mention that I also play a lot of rim shots as opposed to playing in the middle of the head. But that also depends on the style of music and the nature of the song. Now I know a lot of people think rim shot equals eardrum crushing sound, right? And a hard hitting approach. But it's all about the touch. You can play rim shots at any volume and velocity, depending on the song. I personally like rim shots because they have a certain presence to them. What I noticed about the 8x14 was that it sat in the mix as opposed to being above the mix. 
This went live and in the studio. I recently put out a video about this concept when it comes to big symbols as well. Either click on the link right here, or you can click on the link below in the description box. Now, what I said in the symbol video holds true also to what I'm about to say about 8x14s. And, like big symbols, big snare drums also get a bad rap immediately when you pull them out. Most people think of them as a rock snare drum, which isn't the case at all. So I like to make a case that 8x14s are great for most styles of music, and definitely when it comes to smaller venues. Now, I'm gonna repeat this again. Like I said before, I'm a big guy, I use big sticks. And although I use the appropriate touch for the venue and the song, I still believe that a snare drum or any drum needs to be hit at a certain velocity to make the snare drum or tom or floor tom truly ring and resonate, right? And what I mean by that is you ever been to a gig and you heard somebody play and they're playing really, really light, right? Now, mind you, it's maybe a small room and it needs to be light, but they're playing too light. They're hitting the head and all you're hearing is just the top head. I believe it's very important that when you strike a drum that you hear the head, the shell, and the bottom head, they all need to resonate in harmony because after all, that's what a drum is. It's a head, shell, and bottom head, unless it's a concert time. But all of these are made for a reason and they sound their best when they're all working together. Now, if you got a cheap, real cheap drum set, sometimes that just doesn't work like that, right? The better the drum set, the more sensitive, I should say, the more, not better, the more sensitive a drum is, that is more easily achievable by, you can play it quiet or you can play it loud, but everything still resonates. Now, this is my opinion. It's not in cement or it's not written sealed with blood and it is not law. This is just what I observed in my last 23 plus years of playing out professionally. Now I've had nothing but praise over the years for my cymbal tones and my snare drum tone. My playing, eh, maybe not so much. Hey, aren't you Brian Mendes? Yeah. Man, your snare and cymbal sound great. Hey, thanks man. Your playing sucks though. Now one of the local venues that I've played countless shows at here for the past 25 years here in Austin, Texas is the Saxon Pub. This is a small venue and it never fails how many people will walk up to me after the show and they will tell me how surprised they are when they see my snare drum thinking that I'm about to blow the, the room out but were pleasantly surprised at how well it sounded in that room and did not blow the eardrums out, thankfully, and the snare drum sounded great. Man, that snare sounds awesome. Hey, thanks, man. Is that a six and a half or a... No, it's an eight by 14. Well, dude, it sounds awesome. Why, thank you. Too bad you suck. Sound like bowling balls found down the staircase, son. What I've noticed about eight by 14s is they sit in a register that's not so ear piercing. It doesn't blow out your eardrums with that high pitch sound. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean you can't crank down on an eight by 14 and still get plenty of crack and blow out everybody's eardrum in the room. You most definitely can. But when properly tuned and hit accordingly to that room, it sounds amazing and it sits right in the mix. You can still get that crack without mowing down everybody in front of you. Now, pretty much at all my gigs, I use an eight by 14 snare drum. It may vary in the materials that are used for that snare drum. I might use the aluminum, or I might use the maple. You get the picture. Except with the exception of possibly hip hop, R&B, or funk. And even then, there's some exceptions to the rules. I might play my 8x14. So with that being said, I highly recommend you go out and try an 8x14 snare drum. I think you will be pleasantly surprised at the tuning range you can get out of one of them, the applications that you can use them in, and their ability to sit in the mix at a small venue and not blow out everybody's eardrums in front of you. I'm Brian Christopher Mendes. This is Mendiesel 101. Peace and chicken grease, motherfuckers! <laughs>